everything. Hey guys, welcome to the first ever episode of Ask a Dev. On a weekly basis, we're going to take some of your comments and questions that I think would relate to the coding community and those looking to learn to code and struggling and things like that, or just enlightenment and answer them for developers. We're gonna start off by uh, myself answering them. And as the sh channel continues to grow, I'll ask some of uh, my developer friends at work, my friends who are developers, um, guests of the channel, whether it be Simple Programmer, Engineer Truth, uh, who's a developer now. Uh, you also have uh, Quincy Larson, who I'll be interviewing, and some of these other coding channels. And we're basically going to answer five or six of your questions that I think are relevant. And let's go ahead and jump right into it. The very first question is uh, from, let me go ahead and pop this up. Uh, Sean C. Laughs that says, I have no experience at all and need to learn from scratch. This video really helped me out. Thanks. Should I worry if it feels difficult and overwhelming at times? As someone who's been coding for, I would say, roughly four years, pretty solidly, you're always, it's always going to feel difficult. It will not always feel overwhelming. And what I mean by that is that you're going to be struggling because you're always going to be getting better and you're always going to be learning new things. So when, when jQuery starts feeling easy, you may learn move on to Angular. And you may, because you, you need to gain as many skills as are out there. So once you feel good to front end development, you're gonna move on to back end development. And that's gonna be a whole new challenge, a whole new process. So don't, don't feel bad when it's overwhelming because it will pass. Um, you just need to stick with it and, and uh, continue on and it'll, it'll, it'll pass. I always, I always equate coding to math. It's like before you could multiply and divide, you had to add and subtract. And once you had add and subtract down pretty well, you moved on to multiplication and division. Once you had multiplication and division down, maybe you moved on to geometry. Once you had geometry down, you moved on to maybe um, calculus or trigonometry. And then you moved on to advanced calculus. Then you moved on to theoretical mathematics, all these sort of things. And that's really what I equate coding with is like, you may start in web development at HTML and then CSS, then you start adding SAS and JavaScript, jQuery. So don't don't feel bad about being overwhelmed. Just keep moving forward and it'll, it will slowly, slowly get better. All right, so Angus Duffy asks, how did you first learn to code? I first really learned to code when I was in college for computer science. I learned my first language was Java. It wasn't the first program, programming course I ever took, but this would be the first time I ever really understood programming. I, um, so that was where I first learned to code. However, I haven't touched Java in about a year and a half. And I don't, I wouldn't say I know it by any means. And I never really truly felt comfortable with it. It's kind of why I really do enjoy web development is it comes very naturally to me. And that's why I am uh, basically a JavaScript developer at work. But that's how I first learned to code was learning Java and coursework. I would never recommend anybody learn, uh, learn that way. I think online resources are significantly better as well as doing, uh, making your own portfolio, uh, doing your own side projects or things like that. All right, Roxy asks, I'm still doing my own thing on free code camp, but still have difficulty understanding the full spectrum of JavaScript. Lately, I'm finding myself at a standstill with coding, mostly because I don't have as much free time to research and learn languages since I started school this semester. Any advice for those of us who have a passion to code, but who lack ample time, need to learn the skills? The, my one piece of advice is, I, I equate this to exercise. We all have 30 minutes of our day if we really forced ourselves that we could equate to exercising daily. And it's the same goes for coding. You need to code 30 minutes a day regardless of how busy you are. If you can do that, you will be a master. That is my, that is my number one piece of advice. Code daily if you can and you will just continue to improve. This is not so, it's, it's very like muscle memory heavy in your head. Once you kind of gain it, you and continue to build upon it, you're just going next level, next level. But once you stop, it's gonna slowly creep back in where you may find yourself, things are, may not be clicking as quickly as possible as it, as it, you know, maybe when you're doing it 30 minutes a day. So my, my advice for those of you who have uh, time or personal responsibilities, whether it be school or kids or work, is to spend about 30 minutes a day and just, you know what, no matter what, I don't care if I have to lose sleep, 
I don't care if I have to leave work early. I don't care. I don't care. And I don't care about your excuses. 30 minutes a day, I'm going to do it for 30 minutes a day. So if you can do 30 minutes a day and you'll do more when you can, you'll be all right. So just 30 minutes a day is my, my advice for those of you who are a little bit on the busier side. All right, Michael Oliva says, what programming language should I learn for web development? I already got HTML, CSS, JavaScript learned, but I want to know what other languages I should learn to complete all of web development. This is a very weird question because I highly doubt that you have mastered HTML, and CSS, and JavaScript because I don't even say I know those and I get paid a decent amount of money to do it. So um, there's always more to learn in these languages. We work in such a crazy fast place environment, but uh, let's assume that you have a pretty strong handle on JavaScript. Uh, it's time to move on to frameworks, libraries, a good place to start, a very good entry level framework, although it's not the best one to learn is jQuery. jQuery is a great entry, to get comfortable with libraries rather, is a great entry level one. Now, to if you want to work, if you want to work as a web developer, you're going to need to learn more advanced ones, such as such as Angular or React. Angular one is pretty intuitive as far you know. I, that's what I work in. I find it very intuitive. Uh, not everybody does. Um, I haven't touched Angular two yet, so either version of Angular will do just fine. And uh, current version of React is great as well. If you don't want to move on to libraries or frameworks, databases. You can learn MongoDB on free code camp or you could also learn um, sql on on code academy and if those courses are too basic for you or you're already familiar with that go ahead and actually start a project with that and you know incorporate it into your website a lot a lot of these um, websites like GoDaddy or hosting companies like GoDaddy will allow you to connect to the database through um, like PHP my admin or some sort of tool that makes it a little bit easier for you that's my advice if you feel like you have a basic knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and want to just kind of branch out a little bit to other technologies. All right, so the next question is very interesting because it's kind of similar to um, some of our other questions, but that's good because it means a lot of you are kind of in the same boat. Biff is asking here, which by the way, this fly icon actually got my fucking dumb ass <laughs> the first time I saw it. But now I know it's our boy Biff, and uh, you ain't gonna get me again, Biff. But uh, anyhow, is it horrible that I watch this video and code along and do understand why it works based on your explanation, but before watching your video, I'd have no idea where to even begin. Like I have no idea two for loops were needed, or even one for that matter. I kind of feel like I'm way behind for how far along I am in the program I am. Yes and no. Um, yes, if you spend 10 minutes on, he's talking about one of the algorithm problems from Free Code Camp. Yes, if you spend 10 minutes and you're like, oh man, I don't know how to do this. And then you go and watch a video and you know, you do it for one or two, that's fine. But those videos are really to kind of guide you into the technology to basically guide you and say, look, this is how I solve this one problem. Maybe you weren't completely sure how to use splice, how to use filter, how to like think like a program. It's something I talked about a lot in some of my earlier videos is you need to learn how to think like a programmer, how to break down a problem, how to solve a problem. And that's why that's one of the things I've always liked about free code camp is it gives you problems to solve and not just instructions to follow. And once you make that leap and bound, you actually go from someone studying code to writing code. And there's a big distinction about that where you need to be able to break down a problem. Now, if you're struggling with that, that's perfectly normal, perfectly acceptable. How you're, how you're going about to, to solve that problem is very important. I've always tried and say visualize the code. Uh, you have your whiteboards. I, I'm ordering a brand new whiteboard from, uh, or getting a whiteboard from Costco because I'm going crazy not having one trying to solve it. I have a little one off to the side where I'm solving problems on it. Get yourself the biggest whiteboard that you can afford. You can go to Costco, get one for 15, 20 bucks and throw it up on your wall. And when you're thinking what you have to do, start drawing it out, visualize it, think and say, okay, I need to move this letter to this over here. If I need to make this word look like this word, what has to happen for that to do? Start drawing arrows, circle things, and then try doing a little bit of research, going through documentation, thinking, what do I have that can move things? I have for loops, I have variables. How can I use a variable? And start breaking it down. And 
that if you're doing that, it will eventually all click in. And that's where the videos will start to make sense because you, you've already got the juices flowing. And you watch the video and you're like, oh shit, I was this close. Like I didn't know what I needed to do, but I needed the, I had the rough direction. But if you, you know, you're spending 10 minutes and you're kind of like, oh, fuck this. I don't know how to do this. And you don't actually go and watch the video, you know, go and do some research. It's going to be very hard. You're going to watch a three minute video for something that may have taken me 30 minutes and should take maybe someone who's just starting five hours. And that's okay. These these algorithm problems are very realistic to entry level um uh, coding courses like entry and intermediate coding courses in college and they're going to be hard for people who are just starting out i i'm i've solved these in java i've solved these in other languages I've solved them in java python you know all these languages so it's 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 a little more familiar for me but if you're new the first time is always going to be rough because your brain isn't quite at the point where you're like how do i break a problem down quite yet so that, that's really what you need to start thinking is how to do it and start visualizing it. That's really what helped me out the most. And that's why when you're in any sort of developer location, any office, anything like that, you have whiteboard walls. You have entire rooms that are whiteboards. You got whiteboards. You got chalkboards. There's a reason they draw all that out because they're solving comp more complex things, but they still need to see it because you need to see it to visualize it. And once you can visualize it, you can solve the problem. So that's uh, that's the end of this week. Thank you um, to everybody who asked the great questions in various videos. If you want your question answered by myself or other devs in the future, go ahead and leave a comment below. And uh, if you have anything to contribute, obviously I, I will do my best to share it. I try and find the questions that I think a lot of people will relate to. But as always, guys, special thanks to you who are supporting me on Patreon. Uh, you know, that's going the extra mile. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and really ask your questions. Because I want to be able to ask them in interviews uh, coming up with some developers that are a lot more popular than I am, which uh, I hope you guys enjoy. But as always, thanks, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Definitely check them out at devmountain.com. If you're looking for a boot camp that's in front-end development, iOS, or UX, go ahead and give them a shot. Tuition includes housing, so you can get up and go and fully immerse yourself in the program. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.